Now, ladies and gents, let's go to question four. So they say two circles in the diagram below represents interlocking gears. Say so which touch at the point which is Q and uh, which is four and three, right? So it must be that point over there. They say the circles have the following equations, x squared plus y squared, which is 25. So that must be the bigger circle because it is centered at the origin. And the other circle is x squared minus 12x plus y squared minus 9y plus 50 equal to 0. Now they say to us, show that the coordinates of P are 6 and 4 and 1 over 2. So remember P, this would be the coordinates of the center of the other circle, right? So what we normally do to find the center. So firstly, we're going to say x squared. Okay, let me just write it nicely. So this is x squared. Uh, plus 12x. Now, we have to complete the square here, right? But before I do that, I'm just going to leave a gap, you know? Um, okay, let me just make sure that I have actually sufficient space. Let me write it this side. So this is x squared plus 12x, right? And I'm going to leave a gap there. And I'm going to say y squared minus 9y, okay? And I'll leave a gap, take the 50 to the other side, that becomes negative 50. Now, where do we find the values where I've left gaps? All we do is take, so this is minus 12x and not plus. So you take the b value, so this is minus 12 over 2. You divide that by 2 and you square that. Now, what I'm not going to do is just take the entire value um, you know, just find the square there. So what I'm going to do is I'll write it as negative 6 squared. So what I'll do, I'll add negative 6 squared over there, right? Let's do the same with the negative 9. So that's negative 9 over 2, right? Squared, right? Negative 9 over 2, okay? I'm going to just write it as exactly that. So I'm adding negative 9 over 2. Okay, uh, I'm going to say squared. And this is equal to negative 50 on the other side, right? Now, ladies and gents, please, I want you to remember that I've added things that were not there in the equation before. So um, I have to do the same on the right so that I can cancel them out. So I've added a negative 6 squared plus remember, but remember, negative 6 squared is 36. So I'm just going to write it in full there as 36. And I've added the negative 9 over 2 all squared, which means it now becomes a positive. So I'm adding the same thing on the right hand side. So 9 over 2 squared gives me 81 over 4. Right, now, then I'm going to factorize. So what it means is when I write this equation, this will be x. Now remember, I take the square root of this, square root of that number. So that's x minus 6 squared plus, for the y as well, square root of y, square root of that number, so that's minus 9 over 2, all squared. So let's add these up and see what that gives us. So that's negative 50 plus 36 plus 81 over 4. Okay, I get 25 over 4. So this is going to be equal to 25 over 4. So this is the equation of the other circle. Right, so the center, which is P, has got the coordinates. Remember that it always changes sign. So that would be 6 as well as 9 over 2, which is the same as 4 and 1 over 2. Okay, so that's how we get those coordinates there. All right, so there we go. Now they say to us, determine the equation of the common tangent AB. Right. Now, to get the common tangent, let's first start by finding the gradient. Okay. 
so we can find the gradient let's call this point o and uh, let's call let's say the gradient of oq right so the gradient of oq m o q okay let's write that nicely again All right so what is that going to be that's going to be uh, 4 minus 0 uh, rather 3 minus 0 divided by 4 minus 0 so remember that's y2 minus y1 k over x2 minus x1 so we get the gradient of this line that we've drawn there which is oq3 over 4 right and now what that does is that it gives us the gradient of that line and it gives us we can now determine the gradient of the tangent right so we know that the gradient of the line oq multiplied by the gradient of the tangent must be equal to negative one so remember that to get the gradient we will just simply invert that number and change its sign so that means that this is going to be negative 4 over 3 so now that we've got the gradient of the tangent we can now find out the c value so we are going to say y is equal to negative 4 over 3x plus c but to get the c value let's find uh, let's substitute that common point which is q right so when y is 3 x okay that's negative 4 over 3 x is 4 and to find that c value right so we're going to say 3 plus 16 over 3 right okay that's negative 16 over 3 plus c but if we take it to the other side it becomes positive so I'm going to say 3 plus 16 over 3, and that gives me 25 over 3. So C is 25 over 3. So which means the equation of the tangent would be negative 4 over 3x plus 25 over 3. And so that's how we get that equation. Hope that you got that, ladies and gents right now on the next question they say if the larger gear makes a full revolution with the um, or rather makes a full revolution one full revolution how many times will the smaller gear uh, turn completely right now i want you to think about it so i want the full revolution of this guy versus the full revolution of that guy okay so if i can find the ratio of their circumference right so that will tell me for every one revolution of the big tri a uh, big circle that will give us the ratio of the smaller circle right so let's do that so i'm going to say circumference okay and by the way remember uh, the area or rather the circumference of a circle is always given okay let me just show you quickly right is always given by 2 pi multiplied by the radius okay now remember both of them will have the same uh, formula for circumference so if i say circumference of the big circle divided by the circumference of the smaller circle okay uh, circumference of the smaller circle i also have 2 pi let's call it uh, the radius of the big over the radius of the smaller circle right now i want you to see if we divide those the two will cancel so what are we left with in actual fact it will be the ratio of their radii okay so what i'm going to do is let's say the radius of the big circle divided by the radius of the small circle 
So, let's see. The radius of the big, right? Remember, we found the equation. And we said uh, it was r squared, x squared plus y squared is equal to 25. So, which means its radius, r squared, is equal to 25. And therefore, r would be equal to the square root of 25, which is 5. So, this would be 5 divided by, for the other circle, the radius squared is 25 over 2. So, which means that in this case, what would be the uh, the rather what would be the radius so r would be r squared is 25 over 4 and so that means that r if we take the square root of that that would be 5 over 2 so this would be divided by 5 over 2 i'm sure you can already see the answer Right, so 5 divided by 5 over 2 will give me 2. So what does that mean? It means for every one revolution of the big circle, the smaller circle will actually rotate twice as much. Okay, twice as many times. Right, so it will be twice. Okay, right, and then uh, they say in 4.4, uh, determine the area of triangle AOB. Right, so let's look at that. Okay. Um, so, so AOB. Okay, so we're looking for that triangle over there. Right, so I need to find out what are the x and y intercept respectively of that tangent, right? So uh, let's find them first. So I know in this case that when x is 0, okay, remember that's the equation of our tangent. When x is 0, I know y, right, so when x is 0, y is equal to 25 over 3, right? But similarly, when y is 0, okay, we know we're going to have uh, 4 over 3x is equal to 25 over 3, right? We can cancel that out. And so we get x is equal to 25 divided by 4 will give us a 7.5. So that would be 7.5 there. Now, which means the length, okay? So if you look at that, okay? So we are going to get 7.5 over there, okay? And which means the Y value uh, would actually be 25 over 3. Right, now, so to get the area, we're going to say uh, base, half base, multiplied by perpendicular height it is a 90 degree triangle right so i'm going to say so the area of triangle aob will be half base okay multiplied by perpendicular height so my base in this case we did find it's the x value so that's 7.5, so 1 over 2 times 7.5 multiplied by perpendicular height, which is going to be 25 over 3. Right, so in that case, what does that give us? At 0 0.5 times 7.5 multiplied by 25 over 3. Okay, and I get a value of 31.25. Okay, and that is square units. Okay, right, so we're not given the units there. Uh, so we're going to say those are square units. Right, and finally, ladies and gents, uh, the last question that they're asking us here. They say another tangent to the circle okay with center o is drawn from a okay so 
we are now drawing another tangent okay i'm just going to remove that all right so we're drawing another tangent from a okay i'm assuming that will be the tangent over there okay uh, you get the point it will touch on that side all right now they say to us okay and it touches the uh, the circle at c okay so they say and c is the reflection of q all right by the y-axis determine the length of cq now ladies and gents very very important question so they're saying this is the point c right now what would be the coordinates of the point c so firstly i want you to realize that the point c in this case they said it's a reflection right uh, about the x uh, rather the y axis right so that means that the only thing that's going to change is the sign of the x right so which means that point there would be negative four but the y value would remain the same right now i want you to think about it we're going four units that way we're going another four units that way right so how, uh, what would be that the length of uh, cq so cq would be 4 minus a negative 4 and so this would be 8 units all right so that is how the cookie crumbles ladies and gents let's go on to the next question